Eternally Yours, a program of inspiring music and an eternal message of hope. On today's program, Reverend Mabry's message is titled, Christ Came to Save, Heal, and Deliver, Part 1. Thank you so much, Suzanne de Groot, for that anointed song. Suzanne is a very anointed singer, a gal that loves Jesus. She's from Hope, BC. I know her personally, and we will be talking about her CD later. One of the most anointed CDs I've ever heard in my life. But now I have a message on my heart that I would call really, really good news. Good news. Everyone likes to hear good news. This message is entitled, Christ Came to Save, to Heal, and Deliver. I'm going to go through all three, and they're all for you as you yield to Christ the King. The Lord God Almighty, who made heaven and earth, the stars, the moon, you and me, his pleasure, came to earth, died on the cross for our sins, rose so we could be just as if we'd never sinned. God loves you. Oh, God loves you with an everlasting love. Whether you're good, bad, tall, short, whatever, God loves you personally. And may you, you be aware of that through the telecast. Amen. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is how Jesus came to save. I've already shared a little bit about that. Romans 6, verse 23 says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So when we talk about Lord Jesus, who came to save us, heal us, and deliver us, well, the saving part is to save us so we don't go to hell. You know, dear one, the truth is this. This is truth. People are rushing to hell, and a lot of people are rushing in any way. In any case, life seems so busy. People are literally rushing to hell. They don't know it. They don't know they're going there. 
And we as Christians can kind of be at the top of that cliff and say, stop, you don't need to go there. Jesus came to save us from paying the price of our sins. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess we have sinned, made mistakes, we all do, he is just to forgive us, faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. John 1, 1 and John 1, 12 to 14 say these wonderful words. The beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Then it says, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Word became flesh. God Almighty humbled himself, emptied himself of using his power as God Almighty. All the while he was still God Almighty. He took the form of a human being and called Holy Son of Man, lived a holy life, came to earth, died on the cross for our sins. And the Word of God says in John 1, 12 to 14, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and they beheld His glory, the only begotten of the Father. And as many as received Him, received Jesus Christ, God gave you the power, God gave you the right to become a child of God, a born again child of God. We have the first birth from mother, but this is a second birth by choice. You choose. Jesus knocks on the door of your heart today, even perhaps for many of you by the thousands. You open your heart and you say, Jesus Christ, come in, be my Lord, be my Savior. You can say it right now, beloved one. Come in my heart, be my Lord, be my Savior. And then speak out with your mouth, Jesus Christ is my Lord. Then you're on your way to heaven. You do that sincerely, beloved, and you will be born of God instantly your spirit that is dead in sin that we are all born that way becomes alive by the holy spirit entering your spirit hallelujah but be careful you need to say jesus christ is my lord with your mouth you believe in your heart what he did on the cross but you speak it out with your mouth the word of god says in romans 10 9 and 10 if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved, no question about it. For with the heart you believe unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. <laughs> See, many people believe Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead and they eagerly celebrate Easter and Christmas that he was born but they have never yet personally said, come in my heart, be my Lord and Savior. I didn't come to that revelation knowledge till I was 39. Late bloomer, so to speak. But now you can do this this very day, this very moment. So that is the beginning. This is a good news message on three points. Being saved, Christ came to save us from paying the price of our sins, give us the gift of eternal life, hallelujah. You all want that. And number two, I'm going to go on to the fact that he came also not only to save, but to heal us. And I will go into the deliverance part a bit as well, as time allows. The second thing is, beginning of healing is already, as I said, being saved. Secondly is, we need our mind and our soul and our emotions renewed. I said the Holy Spirit comes in your spirit. Your spirit is born of God. Your spirit is just fine. <laughs> There's a common understanding your spirit never sins because the Holy Spirit is dwelling in your spirit. But the soul and the body need sanctifying. They need renewing, especially the mind. I want to go in on that for a couple of moments because that's the battleground where the enemy of our soul will try to speak to your mind and get you to feel like you're not worth anything and why would God use your life? Why would God bless you? We need our minds renewed so we will think of what's good, pure, honest, any praise, any virtue. So let me talk about the renewing of your mind for a moment. It begins with your total submitting to Lord Jesus. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that's speaking to Christians, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, for we've been bought and paid for to be God's children by the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. And do not be conformed to this world, verse 2, 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then it says, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Well, if it says, don't be conformed to the world, the worldly ways, then that means one could be. But he says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And when I was reading some time ago, within this last year, Ephesians 4, 21 to 22, I was so touched in my heart how that also can help the renewing of your mind. I set my heart to memorize it. And there it says, we have heard you, are taught by you, Lord, as the truth is in Jesus. We put off the old man that is corrupt and deceitful us. That means the old way, the old nature that has the capacity to sin in it. We put off the old man which is corrupt and deceitful us and be renewed in the spirit of our mind. That's the renewing of the mind, Ephesians 4. I'm speaking from 21 to 24 renewed in the spirit of our mind, and that we've put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness. So as I speak this good news message, how Jesus came to save, to heal, and deliver, I want you to know that when you become a Christian, you get spiritual clothing. You get spiritual clothing that you can't see with the natural eye. The first one you got, spiritual clothing, the garment of salvation, you are saved. The second clothing you have is a robe of righteousness. You are made right with God Almighty, this holy God, through Jesus Christ and His shed blood to wash away your sins. So you have this beautiful robe of righteousness on you. And the third part is you have on you the garment of praise. Scripture says the garment of praise removes heaviness. And somehow, some way, Christians, it seems like we need to encourage one another and do our best to remember to praise God. He dwells in our praises, and in His presence is fullness of joy. So you have the garment of praise. Exercise it, beloved. Praise God. Tell Him you love Him. Sing songs you hear in church, and the Holy Spirit will help you. Just ask Him to remember some of those short songs. And then, we are to put on the whole armor of God. That's the rest of our spiritual clothing. That protects the garment of praise. That protects the robe of righteousness. That protects uh, uh, the garment of salvation. The scripture says in Ephesians 6, be strong in the Lord, his strength, and the power of his might. Put on that whole armor of God. Then you're able to stand in the evil day. Amen. I could speak about the armor, but time does not allow. So, I want to speak for a few moments before I go into deliverance about our bodies need healing physically. When we come to the Lord, and I sure bear witness about this, beloved, I come at 39 and I come with a whole lot of hurts and a lot of background of things that I, I would to God had never happened. And you know that when you come to Him, your body needs healing. The healing begins with your spirit filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's another big message, which I'm going to share soon. And then your mind begins to get renewed as you read the Word of God and pray and yield to the Lordship of Jesus. But your physical body, it needs healing too. So let me speak about that and give you some really good verses to do with your physical body. 1 Peter 2, verse 24 says, Jesus Christ himself, he bore our sins, sicknesses, pains, griefs, and sorrows, and by his stripes we were healed. You see, folks, he died on the cross for our sins. He shed his holy blood to wash us whiter than snow so we could be saved. But the whipping he took was for healing. Thirty-nine stripes. Forty would kill a man. Thirty-nine stripes. He bore the whipping for you and me to be healed. Believe it, pray for it. Persist to believe for healing. You know, you might say, well, how do I do that? Well, I'll tell you how I do it. And it really helps me tremendously. As I persist to believe God's word, the symptoms may not line up. I persist to believe God's word. I persist to believe God's word. And I talk to the Lord like that. 
I said, you know, Lord, there's these symptoms here and there, and I'm getting on in years, but God, I persist to believe your word. Let me tell you about um, a, a true story of persistent faith. Have persistent faith. Keep believing God's word. He said it, we believe it, that settles it. And then I believe God rushes by the Holy Spirit to make it real. Amen and amen. Let me tell you a story of true, persistent faith in the Bible. Mark 2, verse 2, 5, 10, and 12. 2, 5, 10, and 12. There was a gathering, and there is no longer room for this person on a stretcher to get into the room to get to Jesus. There was no room. Not even near the door it was so crowded. And Jesus preached the word to them. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to that paralytic, immediately he rose, took up the bed, and he went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified, saying, We never saw anything like this. But now you might say, well, where's the persistent faith? Now listen to this. They couldn't get in the door to get to Jesus. They couldn't even get near the door. They went up on the roof, dismantled the roof, and they let down the sick man on a stretcher right down to where Jesus was preaching. Here comes someone that needs healing. It's looking like they're coming from heaven, but they're coming from the roof. Down. That is a good example of persistent faith. And then Jesus again, he said this, when Jesus saw their faith to do such a thing, persistent to believe Jesus, just I just got to get to Jesus and I'll be healed. You can get to Jesus in a moment, beloved. Just say, oh, Jesus, my Lord, heal me, your daughter, your son. And so they got to Jesus and he said, son, your sins are forgiven you. And immediately that paralytic man, he rose and they all were amazed, and they said, we never saw anything like this before. Have persistent faith. God's Word says we are healed in the Old Testament, confirms it in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, it's in Isaiah 53, 4 to 5. Surely Jesus Christ bore our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet they esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace were upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And 1 Peter 2.24 says, by his stripes we were healed. The healing was attained for you and me, Christians, over 2,000 years ago. Keep persistent to believe it. You have nothing to lose being persistent with your faith and everything to gain. You know, the longer you follow Jesus, the more stronger your faith will be. How do you get faith? By hearing the Word of God like you do on Eternally Yours Telecast. And when you go to church, and make sure you go to a church where they preach the solid Word of God. And if you live in the Vancouver area, Greater Vancouver and British Columbia, if you please come along and join us on Sunday, and you will hear the solid Word of God in our fellowship. The Word of God, I confirm that by the Word. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Every time you tune in eternally yours telecast, I guarantee your faith level is rising. Faith pleases God. Faith moves the heart of God. And so, beloved ones, have persistent faith. Believe that Jesus Christ came not only to save you from paying the price of your sins, but to renew your mind and to heal you. And when you become a Christian, it means you have heard the Lord. You have believed the good news of what Christ did for you on the cross. But he did so much more. That would be enough forever and ever, given us the gift of life eternal. But there's more. He came to heal. He came to deliver. He came to live in and through and with us by the Holy Spirit. When you become a Christian, God never leaves you nor forsakes you. Never, not for a moment. He's even with you when you're naughty. 
but don't go there because you reap what you sow when you lose out in some blessings down here and rewards in eternity future. There's going to be rewards in eternity future. You can earn crowns down here that we will have the joy at tossing at Jesus' feet. There's a crown just for becoming a Christian. There's a crown for preaching. I thank you for that one, Father. There's a crown for tribulation, what you go through. Whatever you're going through, God is greater. Oh, dear one, he's so much greater. Do you know what I say often when I'm going through a big trial? And, and they come and they go to all of us. They come to St. Paul. He wrote most of the Bible. He had faith, <laughs> great faith. But the scripture says in Psalms 34, many of the trials are godly person, but God, you bring us out of all of them. And so, beloved, when you're going through a trying time, this is what I do. And I encourage you to consider it for your sake and God's sake. Lord, help me get through this trial pure gold like you helped Job. <laughs> he helped Job. Job lost everything. He lost his family. He lost his riches. He was the richest man in the East. But he said, yea, though he slay me, still I will trust him. And to me, that's very persistent faith. So what happened? Job 42, 10 and 12. His losses were restored. The latter was greater than the former. His health was restored. And it's interesting. His health was restored and the losses were being restored when he prayed for his friends. <laughs> so pray for others, not just me, my, my, my spouse, our four, so to speak. Pray for others. Pray for me, beloved. I would delight you would pray for me because I'm on a frontline ministry and, and I need the backup of prayer. In fact, just before this television taping, uh, last night I sent to my care group, I have a lot of people on my prayer group, thank you, Father, I would to God, I had thousands, and I said, you know, when a policeman is doing something and he needs help, or he's in trouble, he needs help, he gets on his two-way radio and he says, need backup. <laughs> so I entitled my, uh, email to my care group that I asked to pray for me, and the title was Need Backup. <laughs> and then I quickly got one by a cousin that's a minister of mine in Port Alberni. Uh, his name is uh, Pastor Bradley Dame, and he said, I'm giving you backup. And there are people right now praying for you in this very room where this filming is happening. God loves you. God loves you with an everlasting love. And so remember the good news. Jesus came to save, he came to heal, he came to deliver, and more. And I will be speaking more about this on the next program. Be sure you tune in. God loves you with an everlasting love. God wants you to walk in the good news, the very good news. Thank you, Father. He came to save, to heal, Renew and refresh your mind to deliver you, bring joy to your heart, to live right inside you by the Holy Spirit, to walk with you and talk with you and strengthen you and bless you. There's blessings unheard of for every Christian that will follow Christ. Amen. Oh, beloved ones, in this tender time, I just really like to uh, share with you as much as the good news that I've been talking about on the program, how Jesus Christ came to save, to heal, and deliver. But you know what? As I grow in the Lord, the key thing, the key blessing, the most important blessing is an intimate intimate love relationship with God, wanting to know Him. Yes, I want to make Him known, but I want to know Him. The scripture says in Daniel 11, those that know God will be strong and do exploits. I long to finish the race of life well, and I know I need God's strength. And so, as wonderful as it is, the good news about Jesus coming to save us, heal us, and deliver us, 
the better part, and perhaps even, well, it all flows together, but the exceptional intimacy of the love with God. So in the last few moments, I'm going to pray that God will reveal to you His love and that God will help you and I have more intimate love relationship with Him. An emphasis on the agape part. We delight that God loves us unconditionally. When we're good and when we're not, He always loves us because God is love. But we want to love Him with His agape love. And Romans 5 verse 5 says, I'm not ashamed, I have hope, for the love of God is shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Spirit. So we can love people and love God with His agape love shed abroad in our heart. That's what I'm going to pray. Oh, Father in heaven, as awesome as it is that you sent Jesus, as blessed as it is, Lord Jesus, you came to save, to heal, and to deliver. But, oh, Father, how rich and awesome and blessed it is to know you in an intimate, unconditional, God love relationship. And this is my prayer for the dear viewers today, those that know you and will come to know you, and for myself as well. Abba, Father, would you deepen upon us awareness and knowing of your love? Because we will love you because you first loved us. Oh, God, just wrap us in your love and help us love you with your unconditional love, the love of God shed abroad in our hearts. Help us flow in that love to love you, Father, and have this intimate, wonderful love relationship with our Creator, Sovereign God. Wrap us in your love now and healing power and comforting love in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Oh, dear folks, God loves you with an everlasting love, strong love. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. He's a God of love. And I delight to share His love and His word over the airwaves. And I so want to thank all you folks that have come on board prayerfully and financially to keep us on the air for so many years. But alas, the time has come. I need to put out the Macedonian call to stay on air on this station, we need people to support financially in a big way. We're a praying Father God would touch 100 people to give $1,000, or 200 people to give $500, or many people to give all different amounts. Oh, won't you come on board and keep us on, on air so we can continue to see people come to Christ and grow in grace and be healed as God's been doing this wonderful work. What you're going to do, please do quickly. Amen.